So I wanted to show you how to do a circular cast on type, cast on edge for a piece of one by one ribbing. Um, if you own a bond machine, um, you may be envious of that type of cast on because it's typical of a ribber cast on on a Japanese machine, you know, your brothers and your knit masters. Um, so I'm going to show you how you can do that, making a latched up rib on the bond. And um, first of all, what we're going to do is select the needles into working position this time. I haven't got numbers on my needle bed, so it's harder to um, judge. I'm going to do 40 needles. I'm going to bring them into working position because I'm going to show you an easy way of selecting every other needle because we want to cast on over alternate needles to begin with. Now, typically you don't have a needle pusher for a bond machine. Um, so it's going to take a long time, you know, doing this. So I want to show you a faster way of selecting alternate needles. So the reason I had you bring them into working position instead of to holding position is because what I'm about to show you makes this much easier. So put your pinky finger over the needle bed like that. And with the tip of your pinky finger, just push back on one needle, bring forward. And as you move your finger along, you see how fast you can select alternate needles. Now I'll do this all the way along. Okay, so once we have our alternate needles in holding position now, we can hang the hem. Now because you haven't got the green cards to hold the needles back, this can be a bit tricky. There we go. Make sure this time, because we're on alternate needles, you have two plastic strips between each needle. Make sure your latches are open and hang the shearing elastic. Fold the hem over and push the hem back against the needle bed. So the yarn, the elastic is now behind the latches and push the needles back to forward working position in the usual way. Now, what we want to do is we want to use a key plate size smaller. If you're already on the smallest key plate, then just tension the yarn through your fingers for these first two rows. So I was on key plate three, so I'm going to put key plate two into the carriage thread up in the usual way and we're going to knit two rows on alternate needles with the smaller key plate size. Hang a clip on the loose end here. Okay, now we're going to bring the alternate needles back into work and just bring the knitting just extended slightly of the bed so you can get in there and open those those latches make sure all those latches that are the needles that have no stitch on them the empty needles that the latches open otherwise the yarn won't catch so just push those back to working position. Put in your regular key plate that you're going to use. Which in this size is key plate three. So now we're going to knit the number of rows we want for the ribbing. So I'm going to reset my row counter since I have one on. And I think I'll probably knit um, 14 rows. So make sure you knit this first row slowly so that the yarn will catch those empty needles. 
and it looks okay. So we have cut all those stitches. And just continue knitting your the body of your rib. Now after you've knitted the number of rows for your ribbing, you'll see you'll have these little holes here and the two um, ladders at the bottom. So you'll want to follow up where those stitches are and just drop, you can use the, your knees to support the hem if you like. Depends how long your rib is. And unravel it completely. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the latch tool. Of course this will be easier for you because <laughs> you won't be trying to fight with a camera in front of you. So we're going to go under those two bars there, those ladders, with our hook and catch the third one in the tool and latch it through and just continue to latch up the rib Oops. as you would normally do. Second to last stitch is always the most tricky. So once again, we're going under those first two ladders that were created on alternate needles and pick up that third bar there into the hook. And those two from the beginning will slide over. And then you just continue latching up your rib. And again, unravel it, go under those two bars there, third bar in the hook and pull through and continue on latching up. I wouldn't recommend you drop all the alternate stitches at once and ladder them because it can make the tension a bit uneven, so you're better just doing them one at a time. And once it's off the machine, you can give it a bit of a stretch lengthways or vertically, and it will help even the tension up of your latched up rib. So I'm just going to continue latching these up off camera. I'll knit a few rows and take it off the machine and I'll show you what we've got. So once your knitting is off the machine and you've taken all your bits and pieces off it, you want to go ahead and remove the hem in the usual way. It'll be a bit easier because you've been working on alternate needles. Get all your fingers off, the bits of elastic, and make sure that you give the knitting a good tug to just pull it into shape. And there we have it. That is our circular type cast on. You see how it rolls around. has a really nice edge to it and if you used I imagine actually if you'd used nylon cord to cast on you probably would have had a firmer edge than that but I always like the way that the latched up ribs look on a bond I just think they look really 
just look really hand knitted, don't they? Machine knit ribs usually really, really pull in, whereas hand knit ribs don't. See, pulls in a little bit, but not massively. It just looks really nice. But anyway, see how nicely that sits. It's retracted in. See, that would look nice around a, on the cuff, maybe. Have a sleeve. But anyway, that's that's a way to do a a closed edge cast on for a rib, a latched up rib, that looks much like or similar to a circular cast on on a double bed Japanese machine. But there we are. So hopefully you found that helpful and thanks very much for watching.